Whether you're an established business or just getting started, Google Ads is so important to understand. Today, we're gonna to give you a complete tutorial and show you everything that you need to do to get set up. For those that are new here, I'm Davey Fogarty. I've spent over $23 million on Google Ads. I've done over $270 million on Shopify. Let's jump straight in. So in today's walkthrough, I'm gonna be using an e-commerce product as an example. However, if you're looking to set up an agency or you're a local business, you can use the strategies that I discussed today and the basic account structure that I'm about to show you. At the end, we're also going to show you how to set up Google Shopping. Google Shopping is those little images that you see of products when you search a query in. Google Shopping is far more effective for product-based businesses, which is apparent by where they actually show up in the mobile search. Two thirds of the clicks are actually going to Google Shopping at the moment. So it's really important that you follow through through this whole video, no matter what kind of business you're in. The first step is we're going to write in Google Ads and we're gonna start setting up our account. We're just gonna click get started and you should have a Gmail by now if not create one. And you're gonna be prompted to go through these advertising goals here. I highly recommend not doing that and switching to expert mode straight away. Now you've got a lot of options here. You can use the sales objective, but what we're gonna to do today is create a campaign without a goals guidance. Then we're gonna to go to these search campaigns. Search examples are where you come into here and they actually come up just under the shopping ads. So these are the shopping ads. And then these are the search campaigns. You can see some of our competitors here for our cleaning product today. I'll just briefly touch on these campaign types here. So we've got display ads, which are those image ads that seem to follow you around all over the web. They are either Google display ads or their native advertisement through Taboola and Outbrain. You don't need to understand them just yet. There's also video through YouTube, which I'm sure you already know what that is. We've also got app, smart, discovery, performance max. The other one that we can see down here that is grayed out currently is shopping. That's what we're gonna get into by the end of the video. For now, we're just gonna stick with search because that's the simplest. And we're just gonna go website visits. If you don't have a website currently and you're watching this video, just write in anything. It's not gonna hold you to it and follow along. I do have a URL at the moment. It's trylemonscrub.com.au. For those that don't know, we're selling a lemon scrub cleaning paste at the moment. Now what we're gonna do is name the campaign. Campaign names really don't affect your results, but it's a really good organizational tool and a good habit to get into. The campaign name should describe what you're actually putting in the campaign in both ads and keywords, which we'll get into in a second. So this is going to be a branded search campaign. You've got the search network here and the display network. I mentioned display network is images previously, but Google is also willing to put the text-based ads that we're about to import as the display and follow people around the web. This is a little bit advanced for what we're gonna to do today. So I'm just gonna unclick that and we're just gonna specialize in search network and make sure we get the good results there. Next steps is we've got a really nice, easy location selector. I suggest setting just one Google ad account for each region that you're marketing your product. You don't wanna go worldwide. For our website, we're targeting a Australia. So I'm just gonna leave that there. It's picked that up nicely and English is fine. We've got audience segments here, which is again, a little bit more advanced. This is where we can upload things and target people that we already know is interested. We don't need to do that just yet. And then we come down to budgeting. We will need to put a budget in for today and we're just gonna do $10 to get started. Ignore this message. We're just trying to learn at the moment. We're gonna come here and click on bidding. Now you can see multiple options here. These conversions and conversion value is something that you're definitely going to want to use if you're selling a product directly through Google Ads. You will have to set up conversion tracking through that, which you can do through tags, Google Tag Manager, and Merchant Center through shopping ads. But now we're just gonna do clicks because that applies to every single person that's watching this video. We definitely can set a maximum cost per bid limit to really avoid those clicks skyrocketing. However, chances are, if you're just starting your brand, you really don't know what you're willing to pay for your clicks. Let's just put in a placeholder at the moment for $4. I doubt we're gonna spend that much because those clicks are quite expensive. The thing that's really worth noting down here is ad extension. These ad extensions, when you fill them out, can really increase click-through rate. They can also increase conversions. I'm a big believer in providing Google with as much to work with as possible. It's the same as Facebook ads. I'll just touch on these ad extensions quickly and when you would use them. A site link extension is where there's another web page within your website that is of interest to people and you really wanna push them there. So for example, one of our businesses outdoor play, it's selling outdoor equipment. We might wanna push people to the about us page or we might wanna push people to the camping gear specifically rather than just the home page. So we could enter in the text, the description, and the different URL for that part of the website. The call out extension is basically your unique selling proposition for your website. It might be free shipping. 
it might be free returns. Try to be really unique here and give really short snippets that are easy to digest to make your ad stand out versus your competitor. The call extensions is where you can add a phone number to your website. Phone numbers are a great way to build trust. Existing customers can then easily find your phone number and they can call you and you can either upsell them or solve their problem. I'm just gonna add a couple of call out extensions for today, such as free shipping, above $50, based in Australia, as seen on YouTube, premium cleaner. I'm gonna save that. All of those call out extensions need to be incredibly family friendly, otherwise they won't get approved. We're gonna click save and continue and go to our ad groups now. So that is basically our campaign structure, who we're targeting and whatnot. It's a little bit different to Facebook where their ad groups are actually where all that targeting happens. If you're really new to Google and you're not really sure what your product is, you can probably just set up one ad group at the moment and get some results with it. If you kind of know what product you're marketing, you might wanna set up a multiple ad groups. So you can see here that now I've gone to my ad group, all of this stuff has populated. That has actually populated from our website because we gave it the URL at the beginning. It's grabbed all of the example keywords. Keyword research used to be a really, really important part of Google Ads. Like all marketing, it is adapting over time. There are hundreds of keyword tools out there. If you're a beginner, the main requirement is that it's free. We're gonna come up here and we're gonna use keyword sheeter. We're gonna click here and it's a free tool with absolutely no sign up. So now we're on Keyword Sheeter. I'm just going to filter by Australia. I wanna go a little bit more narrow around why someone would be using my product. Why do they want the cleaning place? Do they wanna clean a barbecue? Do they wanna clean their kitchen? Do they wanna clean their oven? It's really important to understand this because we wanna make our ads as specific as possible to the buyer's intent when they're searching this keyword. If, they, if they're searching for a great bathroom cleaner and they see something about a barbecue cleaner and our ad talks about how it's great at cleaning barbecues, there's less likely that they're gonna click on that rather than if we say we're the best bathroom cleaner of all time. So I'm actually gonna use the barbecue cleaner as an example here and I'm gonna start keywords. This is now gonna give me a bunch of keywords that I can now target in Google. Now you can see that there's barbecue cleaner wipes, barbecue cleaner set. We've also got barbecue cleaner as seen on TV. These are all great things to start thinking about. We can handpick a couple of these and paste them in here to target. Now it's worth talking about this section down here where we can actually narrow down our keyword search. We've got what's called a broad match, which is what I've put in here. Basically what that means, it allows Google to really associate synonyms with those kind of keywords. So if it thinks that its user is Googling something similar to barbecue cleaner spray, chances are your ad could show up. Now this could be detrimental. For example, if someone was writing in worst barbecue cleaner of all time, or even something as broad as buy barbecue, your product could show up. This is why they allow you to do a phrase match, which narrows it down a little bit. So if the keywords are jumbled around a little bit, it'll still show up. This would most likely stop people searching to buy a barbecue, getting our ad. Exact match is also really useful if you've got a very narrow search intent. So to do that, we just click the open brackets like this. And to do a phrase match, all we do is this. There are also other types of match types that you can use, such as using a plus sign which basically means that this keyword needs to appear in the search query. You can research these in your own time. I'm not gonna do anything for this today's example, but really think critically about what the customer could be searching for so that you can make sure that you've got that keyword selected. The next thing that we can also do is create a new ad group down here. Now this is again, trying to really narrow down that intent. This ad group can be barbecue cleaner and this ad group can be oven cleaner. Again, we want to keep the same URL. One option there is we could actually push them to the product page or a specific landing page designed around the oven cleaning capabilities of the brand. We can then go down here and we can just write in oven cleaner. We can do best oven cleaning. We could also do something like this, like best oven cleaner as an exact match. Make sure that you get a fair few keywords in here so that you can learn from the optimization. Next step is we're just gonna click save and continue and we're gonna go into the create ad section. Now, this is where you can make a lot of money. A bad ad agency will really skip over this and not do enough variations as well as not understand your product and able to sell it. This is why your competitors will beat you. Sit at the top of the page more and get more click through rate. For this URL, I'm just gonna fix that up. Now we've got the display path here. If you have a great URL structure, you could put the product here so that people feel more confident that they're clicking on the right URL. Headlines will obviously be the first thing people read. They're also only 30 characters, so you need to make it short and snippy. Snippy. Punchy. Punchy. 
you snippy. <laughs> <laughs> One thing to note is that this ad group here is for the barbecue cleaner. See up here, it says the barbecue cleaner. So it's those keywords that we talked about before. Down here, we've got the oven cleaner. This is not where I would put in ads about cleaning a barbecue. In this section, we need to be talking to barbecue enthusiasts. But in this section, we might want to talk to to a cleaner or someone that just really loves cleaning. So the language we're gonna use in our ads are very, very different. For the headline here, I'm just gonna say, tough barbecue cleaner, best barbecue cleaner. And you can see that these are going to populate here. It also gives you some options here. If you're getting really stuck, what you can do is you can head over to Google and we can actually get some inspiration from our competitors. So we can do cleaning product. And we can look at some of the headlines that they're running. Obviously don't copy them directly, we need to actually beat them. So we can see sustainable cleaning products, chemical free cleaning, natural cleaning products. We've got quantity discounts, that's an interesting one. So we can come in here, natural cleaning, paste. We don't need to always make it about barbecues, we can make it a broader marketing approach. So we can even head to our website to grab some examples from our copy that we've done. So wipe away years of dirt, that's a great one. Next step is descriptions. This is gonna be far less important. However, do make sure that you write enough copy. I'm just going to grab some stuff from our website. You can obviously put a lot more information in here, not 218 characters, but you get the idea. And that's looking pretty good. You can see the preview ad, an example here. Best barbecue cleaner, wipe away years of dirt, natural cleaning paste. I'd click on that. Now what I'm gonna do is change it up a little bit for the oven cleaner. And now what we can do is we can click save and continue. Now I'm done there, now I can set up my billing. Sometimes you can get promotional codes floating around. Make sure you Google that first. And we're just gonna enter our card details and those ads should start running. Congrats, you've done it. Now what we can do is we can click explore your campaign. I'll give you a quick overview of how you can see your results and what you're looking for. It's really important once you've set up these campaigns to just constantly iterate. Digital marketing is always about just trial and error. You wanna spend small budgets when you don't know what you're doing, reading the results and optimizing it. You'll obviously get better at this with pattern recognition over time. You'll also become a better marketer, understanding your product and your consumer needs. I feel like my voice has changed to like a soothing spa person. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's how we started. I don't know if it's like bad or like good. Like I feel pretty zen out, but I'm sure my viewers are also like. <laughs> <laughs> what I do recommend is clicking switch view here. And it's gonna take you to this table. What we've got over here is the campaigns that we're running. We can get in more details from them going into ad groups. We can see both of our ad groups there, our barbecue cleaner versus our oven cleaner. You've got this graph here, this will populate over time. We can strive for the lowest possible cost per click by optimizing our keywords, ad groups, all of those kind of things over time. You can also click into here to understand more about the keywords that are actually working. And then you can also go into the ads here and see what's working here. All of this will start populating with the results. Now you might be thinking, what's a click worth? And that's a really, really good question. Even if you're lowering clicks, perhaps you're not getting better customers. This is why it's really important to really optimize for sales. You can easily set this up with Shopify if you're selling or other conversion-based objectives. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to set up Google Shopping. So to get shopping, we actually need to go to another Google service, which is Google Merchant Center. We're gonna click sign in here, sign into Merchant Center. So now we need to follow the prompts and get our products set up on Google. This can be a little bit complicated. Just as a first step, make sure that you have your terms and conditions on your website and all your contact details. Otherwise your products actually might not get approved in the Merchant Center. We're gonna click continue here and you can see this is showing our products free on Google. This will also support us when we wanna actually pay for ads in Google Shopping. So we're gonna click continue. We're gonna go through all of these details. So they might make you verify your phone number as well, which is fine. They're not gonna show you that to customers. We're gonna click continue. Now we need to verify and claim our website. So we should be able to write in our website domain here. Now, depending on when you're watching this video, this process could look a little bit different. Most of the steps are exactly the same, just the design has changed. This step, they might actually ask you to add a small bit of code to your website as well, which is nice and simple. Now, what we need to do here is enter all of our shipping information. So I'm just gonna put in free shipping. 
We've got Australia and AUD, which is correct. Now it's really important you try to get this information as close as possible because Google Merchant Center can actually just ban you and deny your products. Enter in your approximate delivery time. I'm just gonna say around 2 p.m. We're self-fulfilling this out of my house, so. Handling time can be one to two days and transit time is gonna be two to eight days. Click next. And now we've got shipping costs, free shipping over a certain amount. So for order price under $50, we charge $9 shipping free shipping over that. This all looks like a pretty good summary. We can click continue. Now, this is an interesting part. You can add one product at a time, but if you're a clothing store, you might have hundreds of products. So you might wanna click add multiple products at once. You're gonna select your language and click continue. Now you have multiple options here and you can upload a feed. So you've got Google Sheets, which you can learn more there to find the format about how you can use Google Sheets to upload, date this feed. You've also got scheduled fetch. You've got upload and content API. Now at this stage, we're gonna actually wanna come back to our Shopify and we're gonna download an app that most people use for this process. So we're gonna come into the Shopify app store and we're gonna write Google Shopping. There's plenty of apps out there, but we use this one. Um, feel free to look through and see if there's any free trials or cheaper options. The pricing will change depending on how many products you actually have to upload, but it's very negligible costs. We're gonna add this app to our Shopify store to get our shopping feed. Now, cause we only have one product for this store, you're probably wondering, why can't I just use that? It's really important to create a feed link because if you ever update pricing or add multiple products, you want this all to be on autopilot in the back end changing. So we're gonna install the app here. And what we're gonna do is click log in with Google. We should log in with that same Gmail that we've been logging in with. Gonna click allow, and we should be able to click here and select the merchant center we want. We're gonna click confirm account. Now the only thing that we actually need to select here is the product format. We can use the SKUs or the global format, either or is fine. I'm just gonna use global format. Now it's gonna sync the products from Shopify into this app. As you can see, it's now trying to push the products to our Google merchant center. Now what we can do is we can come into here and click set up Google Shopping Ads. Now, you've got to enter all of this information here with all of your shipping services, your website, and also your product data. So let's just do that. We're gonna to have to set up our tax, which is, can be complicated depending on where you are. If you're in the United States, they'll probably have more comprehensive information here. There's a complicated tax structure between states. Because I'm not, it's just suggesting this structure. So I'm just gonna click save and that should all be okay. Now we've added that product feed, we should be able to come back here and refresh and our products will show up here. You can see them here and they may still be updating, but we can click continue and finish this step off. I highly do recommend going through the policies and making sure you tick all their boxes. And now the final step is just, we're just waiting on those products to actually be approved. So I can come back anyway, come back to Google Merchant Center and I can finish setting up my Google shopping ads. Coming in here, all of these options should now be populated because I filled them up in the previous section. Obviously I can't add my products just yet because they're waiting approval, but I can link my ad account. And this Google ad ID should pop up because I'm using the same email address. There are other ways that you can link your Google Merchant Center to your Google ads account, such as through Google ads. But now I can actually just click link. They've made it nice and easy for me. Once I've clicked link, it should send a request to my Google ad account. So now I can head back to my Google ad account and I can click tools and settings and I click setup and then I come down here to linked accounts. Now you can see this has received a request now, the Google Merchant Center, I can click manage and link and complete the connection. I'm gonna approve that. And now my Google Merchant Center is now speaking to my Google ads, which is going to allow me to run a Google shopping ad. Once the products have been approved, what we should be able to do is come up here and we can create a new campaign. We should be able to click sales, come down here and click shopping and the linked account will be down here. We can go through all of the same steps that I showed initially to show those amazing Google shopping ads that convert really, really well. Now make sure that you're setting up reviews on your website and making sure that that review feed is also linked to your listing. This is gonna give you those amazing stars and increase your click-through rate. Just like Facebook, Google Shopping is getting very, very smart. Soon keywords are probably gonna be completely irrelevant. We don't even use them for shopping ads. Soon they're going to just use those feed that we just set up and reading the website to optimize accordingly for your brand. It's still a great thing to jump in and learn how to set up the account so you can be literate when you hire an agency and start checking out their results. I hope today's episode allowed you to find some success with your brand and set up your first ad. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.